And the beautiful thing is, is I've realized that God's definition of success is totally different. So oh, yeah. um, no, no matter what's going on with you right now, it's a raging success because success for God is doing God's will, God's way, God's time. And so today in this moment, you are to the best of your ability, obeying his will, doing it his way, humbly, teachable, leaning into community in his time. Yeah, I don't see the whole road, but I'm just going to be faithful because you said to be faithful. I love watching you on social media because you're always giving value. You're very like, you're very much on your public page giving value, but then you also have a Facebook group that you've added so much value to as well. And so you've created your own community in that. Now, if there's somebody listening in right now that wants to create a community, which I feel like everybody listening in does, what would be some tips you could give them on how to create an effective community? that lives on past you. And I think that's what you've done with your community really well. Yeah, thank you. It's, again, hard and simple at the same time. So it sounds so easy, you'll feel guilty doing it. So lean into that. Um, And that is people are curious to know how in the world are, are you, and by you, I mean any of us, how are you doing it? Life is hard, it's discouraging, it's disappointing. Did you know entrepreneurs suffer from depression twice as much as people who are not entrepreneurs? So there are struggles in our job and in our life. And so just years ago, the Lord said to me, Kim, just live your life out loud. And and I joke with my husband, I'm like, here's another edition of my lame life. I mean, I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. I don't talk to that many people. I mean, to me, my life is just eminently the most boring thing on the planet. But He's like, no, just walk with me and just take a snippet and just live it out loud every single day. And it's amazing how people are like, oh, that feels authentic. It feels real. There's no agenda other than I just want to live life with you, whoever you are, as we're doing this together. And they can sense the open handedness. And it's interesting when you're not trying to get community to come, how they come. (laughs) Yeah, that is interesting, right? Uh, But God wants it to be easy for us in that way. Like he wants to show off when we're not striving and trying to make it happen ourselves. That's when he gets the glory because you're like, there is no other way that this happened except for God, you know? Isn't that beautiful? Yes, absolutely. That's the best. I love it. Okay. So I love that. It's you were obedient to God, live your life out loud, and you just started sharing organically what's happening. I love when you... um, you share your Chick-fil-A. Is it milkshakes <laughs> that you get from there, right? That's weird that I know that. It's, 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 it's a get? large diet, Dr. Pepper. Dr. So my daughter my daughter passed away three years ago, uh, and it was a sudden brain aneurysm. So we, we weren't anticipating that. But one of the things she and I used to do together, for whatever reason, we loved our large diet, Dr. Pepper, in a styrofoam cup. Had to be a styrofoam cup from Chick-fil-A. And so she lived in another state. So we'd just take pictures like, oh, look what I snagged today. You know, like Aww. I said, my lame life. Um, and so we would take pictures of our Chick-fil-A cup. And so now whenever I go through Chick-fil-A, I'll just post a picture on social media. It's kind of like a hat tip to my daughter, Bethany. It's like, I'm remembering you today, sweetheart. This is, this, is, oh, I'm going to cry. This, this is for you. And I know that, and I, and I ask the Lord, if, make sure she's watching, make sure you cheer with her that I got my diet Dr. Pepper today. Give her one too. I'm sure there's Chick-fil-A in heaven, right? <laughs> there has to be, there has to be. It is blessed. Yeah. And oh. so it's just, it's just a connecting way for me to remember my daughter. Oh my gosh. I love that. Well, okay. So since you brought that up, I'd love to, if you're willing to talk about that, um, well, I have to take a deep breath because that just made me whew, cry. <laughs> um, how did you get through that? Like, I mean, you're just thri- you're thriving still. And I know like you, she has kids and there's all this, I know it's God. I know you're going to say God, but like, you know, practically, what did you do to, to really move through and still show up right now and be so amazing? Yeah, no, it's just um, God's always the answer to everything. Any question, it's funny in Sunday school, kids can just raise their hand before you even ask a question. The answer's God. The answer's yeah. God. <laughs> but it is the answer to anything. Um, but I, I do think, especially with the world being so hard today, everybody I know, I work a lot also as a spiritual director these days, is suffering hard things that we can't see 
deeply painful things. Um, and so learning that it's okay to lament. More Psalms were written of sorrow and even almost accusing God in anger and lament than Psalms of joy. God is big enough to handle our sorrow and our joy. And he's really taught me that our heart, only because of him, can contain both. I don't have to feel like I'm choosing. You know, I'm going to cry because I miss my daughter today, which means I'm not going to have a joyful day. No, I can cry and miss my daughter desperately today, and I can have deep joy in Christ. And only in him can he reweave, I call it reweaving shalom, that flourishing. Integrate those things that seem so opposite in just a beautiful and meaningful way. So I don't, I think it's all about grieving the grief, always. Yeah, so feeling, feeling the pain. Feeling. Oh, yeah. And let yourself be stinking sad. It's awful. I mean, God came to defeat death. It's the great enemy. I mean, we should be sad about all the brokenness and the pain and the death. Um, but he, uh, in his presence, Psalm 1611, in his presence is fullness of joy. In his right hand are pleasures forever. And because I'm always in his presence, there can be sorrow, but there can also be just that. It's hard to explain to people who don't know Jesus that deeper level of joy that just always can contain everything. I mean, I know that there's people listening in right now that may not have had a similar experience, but they're in a dark moment. And I think it's encouraging to hear that it's okay to feel the the feeling, you know, of the sadness and the deep grief that you have and know that God still has a purpose for you, right? Like right now. Absolutely. Well, as long as we're breathing, he has a purpose for us. And it's interesting. Uh, there's a passage in Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 58, but don't look it up because I don't know for sure. <laughs> where um, uh, He's talking to Israel and he's basically saying, if you're discouraged, if you're down, if you're feeling like your light's about to go out, go out and serve others. And then your light will shine again in the darkness. He has created us not as a reservoir, but as conduits of his love. And so if I just sit here and wait for him to fill me up, but I don't serve other people, just trying to keep it all to myself, I'm actually not going to experience that love fully. If I trust that his love is more than enough and continue lovingly giving to others, he keeps giving to me and it's a conduit of love and it actually overflows in my heart at the same time. So we want to be sad and we want to serve all at the same time. Mm -hmm. mm, so good. I always feel like I'm happiest when I am giving to other people, when I am serving other people. Yeah, because that's how he created you to be. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, should, I always tell my kids that. Like I want, I speak that over them in the morning on the way to school. It's like find a way to help somebody today. And I just want that to be like a part of their DNA, you know, what, which it is. God made them that way, but it's like making them think about looking for ways to do that because I don't know. I, I'm, it's very important to me. <laughs> So, Kim, you've built this incredible business. And, you know, in order, I think, to scale, you've got to have people around you to help your vision come to fruition. What has been the hardest part about um, bringing people alongside you to, to complete the mission? You've probably experienced this too, Kayla. It is hard to find just the right person who has the same vision that you have. And I think it's less about skills is what maybe I've learned and more about their heart and them having a similar vision. So skills are important, but I'm willing to send someone to go get trained, um, to go learn certain skills and practice certain things and then team with them together versus someone hiring someone with all the skills, but who doesn't have the heart or the spirit, the love for the people I serve that I have. You can't train for that. Um, so it goes back to almost being in the right rooms with the right people, um, Christ-centered people. And like my virtual assistant, who's been my virtual assistant since like the day I started my business, was also my closest friend. I twisted her arm into becoming a virtual assistant. She's actually in her 70s now. She continues to be my virtual assistant. I'm never letting her give up on that. <laughs> but, um, you know, she just learned the things she needed to learn because she had the same vision and cared about the same things, but had completely different gifts um, than I do. And so it's the friendship, it's her heart, it's her love for Jesus that make it valuable and everything else can be learned. Mm, I love that. So 
it's that philosophy of hiring for character over skill. And I think that's also where you must, like if you're not inviting God into the hiring process, you know, because he will give you red flags. Like your spirit will be like, no, you know, this isn't, there's, and you can't, and you can't explain why it's a no, but it's a no. And that's the Holy Spirit inside of you protecting you, you know? I've had situations where I haven't listened to that because I was like, oh, you're just being crazy. Like, Me on- too. Yeah, you have to. Because I can't explain this yeah. to myself and give myself a good reason why I'm saying, no, I'm going to ignore God's voice and make my own decision. Yeah, that never works out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like I said, we have a lot of coaches listening in right now. Um, you know, just people that are online giving, a ser- like in a service-based business. And they start their business because they don't want to trade time for money, right? They, they think they are going to have more time. And then they end up going, oh my gosh, like I'm spending more time being an entrepreneur than I am, you know, when I was an employee. And we have to learn at a certain point how to diversify, delegate, use technology to scale our coaching business. Tell me a little bit about what you've done to have more time back in your business. I do like to try a lot of different things. I think of it as putting out like fishing lures on different fishing rods at the end of the pier, you know, is, you know, what, what's important to people? How do they, what do they respond to? And so I'm not afraid to, you know, roll up my sleeves and do the hard work and try new things. But at the end of the day, simplicity, right, is the only thing I think that's really going to give us the freedom we want in our businesses. And so just being ruthless about pruning the things that are not in the top, like 20% of things that really seem to be making a difference. So this is a good thing, but it's not the thing. I don't need this platform. This one's, you know, and just ruthlessly eliminating. And the more, just like trees, right? The more we prune them, the more what remains flourishes and grows. Um, And so sometimes it's hard for me to cut out good things. Just quick story. In 2020, when the pandemic was going around, the Lord was really speaking to me about making a huge shift in my business from business and marketing coaching that I had been doing to doing much more spiritual direction and soul care coaching. Well, between you and me and now everybody who's listening, I mean, that's like probably 85% of my business model, of my clients, of my income, of my everything that I built. I mean, a huge reservoir of knowledge and online courses and the whole thing. And I argued with God for almost a year. Okay, (laughs) so not one of my finer moments. You really, do you really want me to lay that down? But he did. You know, so you prune off 85% and, you know, that's a lot to get rid of. But then what has grown in its place is just, it's stunning in how it fits my needs, my family's needs, and serves the people I get to work with. Um, And so, yeah, don't be afraid to let go of whatever God says to let go of and trust that, again, if I'm faithful, it will be fruitful. He's promised. Okay, I have a question for you about about that specific thing. So you were in this wrestling with God, saying, "No, I want to keep I want to keep eighty five percent of my business." And He's like, has the big huge reveal behind Him, like He has so much for you, but you can't see it yet, right? So how did you confirm? Like, let's say, did you go to a mentor? Did you like how did you confirm that that was what God wanted for you? Because you know. I think sometimes people think they hear from God, but maybe they just hear, you know, obviously you heard from God, but I just want to know, like, did you seek confirmation? If so, how did you? Oh, I understand what you're saying. Sometimes I say, Lord, is that you or is that last night's pizza, right? Yes. It's not, (laughs) it's not always easy to know. Um, Spent a lot of time uh, talking with my husband during that time. And then yes, friends, mentors, and other people. And there are, do you remember the 12 spies in the Old Testament that went to spy out the land of Canaan and 10 of them said, great land, but no way. We can't do this. And two said, yes, this is God's land. And it was the two that are right. So it's not the matter of numbers, but it is a matter of, you know, wisdom comes from many counselors, it tells us in Proverbs. So just like, why do you think that way? What coming up for you? What do you see in me? What do you see in my business? So it was, I usually make quicker decisions, but in some ways I'm really glad I lingered in it because then of course, once you start something new, it's a little bit slower going at first. I just, I was glad that I knew that I knew that I knew it doesn't matter if I never get a client again. This is what God told me to do. I wanted to have that kind of certainty about the whole adventure. Um, Yeah. So all the things I think are smart. 
Okay. I love that. I think sometimes people, because the world will tell you to go, you know, I saw this meme the other day that was like, alpha females don't run in packs. We are, we're alone. And I'm like, somebody like reposted it. And I was like, no, like that's not a badge that you want to wear. Cause that's not like, and it was actually a Christian woman that posted it. And I was like, no, like God doesn't want us to be the end all be all and be alone out there. Like he really does have people that have gone before us that want to speak into our lives, you know? So I love that you said many, that you, the many counselors and you asked, you wanted to seek to understand, you know, their thinking behind it because that rubs off on you to start just thinking differently about your business and, and the possibilities. So people can get a little prideful and they go, I don't want to, I don't want to tell anybody what happened, you know, or what God, what I think God is trying to tell me. I actually, when I started to rebrand, I actually talked about it at my Bible study because I was wrestling with giving up Mommy Millionaire, the name that, you know, just everything about it. Cause I felt like it really was, it had become part of my identity, but I also think that's why God was like, it's got to go. And everybody in my Bible study was like, it was like confirmation. They're like, yes. Yeah. And I, so I also went to people on my staff and I was like, we need to pray because I don't know what the name is going to be. I don't know what we're going to do next. And I had several people come and confirm it was supposed to be my, my name, Craft. And so, but it's been a slow start to change up everything. And people go, well, what are you doing now? Where, what's happening with Mommy Millionaire? And I'm in my mind, I'm going, but I know that I know that I know that this is what God wants me to do. It's not looking like um, rainbows and sunshine right now. <laughs> it's an uphill, it's an uphill climb right now. But it's, it's like I'm not going to throw in the towel because, you know, it was God ordained. And the beautiful thing is, is I've realized that God's definition of success is totally different. So oh, yeah. um, no, no matter what's going on with you right now, it's a raging success because success for God is doing God's will, God's way, God's time. And so today in this moment, you are to the best of your ability, obeying his will, doing it his way, humbly, teachable, leaning into community in his time. Yeah, I don't see the whole road, but I'm just going to be faithful because you said to be faithful. So all of heaven is rejoicing in your success today. And whatever follows is just, you know, it's God's blessing and grace, but it's not a sign of his favor. His favor is already on you because of your obedience. Mm, that's so good. Oh my gosh, you need to be a pastor. You just you need to talk all the time. I, I need to see a Facebook Live every day, Kim. <laughs> It's so good. But I think that's just like you could tell you have this intimate relationship with the Lord because it just, God just oozes out of you. Like his spirit just oozes out of you. It really does. Everything. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So I know I I aspire. That's why I want to hear from you and like glean wisdom from you is because like I aspire to be that way one day. Right. So I just, I love that. And I, I know you've been faithful and God's has so much more for you. So on that note, where do you see yourself going in five years? What is your vision for your business? Yeah. Well, it's totally different. So God's got such a great sense of humor, right? It, it, um, he has allowed my husband and I to buy a kind of uh, retreat house, um, I know, in Georgia. And it's at the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. It happens to be only an hour from our twin grandsons, my daughter's boys. Um, and so hence the location, right? <laughs> it needed to be close to them. But also I'm creating with a friend of mine. Uh, we have soul flourishing groups, which are just like soul care groups for entrepreneurs. And then more and more people out of that and out of our prayer powered groups. I just want to have more in-person connection, long lingering times with God. So we had our first two retreats this summer for the soul flourishing groups. And just like in the middle of the day, after we'd spent some time getting all prepped in the morning, just send them out three or four hours, go spend some time with God. Here's some things to talk to him about. Here's what he's got to say. And I almost have to chuckle because it's kind of like the retreat that cannot fail. (laughs) Go ask God what he thinks and then come back and we'll help you figure out how to do it. I mean, how can that go wrong? I mean, and back to, it's back to you saying it's easy. In some yeah. ways, God is so easy, right? Um, and so it was such a joy, though, to be able to be in nature and have people um, just spend time listening to God and being renewed and refreshed and sending them out. So I want to do more and more work like that, just supporting the entrepreneurs themselves versus uh, the more technical kind of, 
help that I was giving before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember you used to send out, um, like, you would tell people what to post and have them set up emails too, right? I remember that. <laughs> so I, I can definitely relate with wanting to get out of that. <laughs> and the retreat, I feel like that is huge. We got to link up whatever, however, do people have to apply to go or how does that work? Yeah. So as long as they're a member of our Soul Flourishing group, so I'll send you a link to okay. that or people can go to soulflourishing.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll link everything up in the show notes so people can check it out because people are craving experiences, especially coming out of the pandemic. I feel like they're just craving more and more experiences. We've been alone, you know, working remotely for so long. And even though the world is going back to normal, I feel like people are never going to be what they used to be before. Like, you know, it's just, it's different. And I think it's good. I feel like God revealed um, some of the kind of discontent and disconnection we had that we were kind of pushing down and silencing with our busyness. And the pandemic gave us the opportunity to say, you know, that doesn't really satisfy. That's actually not working out real well for me. How can I go about this a a different, more connected way? Mm, I love that. Okay. So soul flourishing retreats. That's what you see yourself doing just more and more of. And Like for you, what does it look like for you to give back? You know, generosity is a huge piece, I think, for us like Christian entrepreneurs. What are you passionate about giving back to? Well, people who are doing the kind of work, yeah, that I appreciate. So I have a prayer-powered mastermind kind of facilitator training program and groups. And last year, uh, again, I have somebody who kind of helps me with that. She and I prayed about it. We'd had like a yearly renewal fee and just all the things, you know, all the things. And we just decided, no, this is just our way to to seed more prayer in the world. So once people go through the program, we're we're going to support them, encourage them, have monthly gatherings for them, pour into them. And we're just, we're not going to charge for it because it's our way of spreading prayer out into the world and letting people connect with God in deeper ways. So that felt really good. And that's just, it's fun to do, to think, oh, I'm showing up. This has nothing to do with business. I'm showing up because I believe in this mission 100% and I believe in these people. Wow. I love that. That takes a lot of faith too to go, okay, I'm going to take this stream of income and now it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> uh, but God knows and he probably restored in, um, in a different way. So I love that. And I think also your time and your resources are probably even more valuable to give than money, you know, because money, you can always make more of time you can't get back. And, you know, like time you can't get back. So giving of yourself in those moments to pray with people is so, I mean, I think that's so precious. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's fun to be at this season and doing this kind of work. So I'm huge on talking about the like Proverbs 31 woman, because the more I studied her, I realized like she's not just like chilling, making sourdough at home. She does that. But then she also like, she is like diligently thinking about investments and just like creating, you know, safe, a safety net for her family. And that's what got me so into like, I got to teach women how to invest, even though I felt like a total imposter. Cause I'm like, well, I didn't go to finance school. How am I going to teach people? And God's like, well, you're going to do it. And you're going to just teach them by your experience. And I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> why, why me? <laughs> but, uh, you know, whatever he's called it and I've been obedient. So it's been really fun. How, um, how have you seen, you know, people in your line of work create multiple streams of income to diversify and, you know, create more of those like passive streams for legacy wealth for their family? Oh, wow. Um, that was a loaded question. Sorry. It was a loaded question. I didn't really have time to think about it, but I do think just as I'm kind of scanning through my mind, the, a lot of the people in my groups and that I work with, um, I think it comes down to, and again, please don't overthink this if you're listening today, but it, it comes down to your uniqueness. So whether you're a poet or an artisan or an investor or you're a communicator or you're a writer, uh, the world needs the gifts God gave you. That's why he gave them to you. And I do think faithful stewardship 
should be rewarded financially. That's what makes the marketplace work. That's what makes the world a beautiful place and allows us to all do what we do. And so more and more, I see people not being afraid to lean into their, it seems really niche to them. Well, this is really niche that I'm into. I'm going to make up something. I'm into macrame or whatever like that. <laughs> but, but I'm just going to start doing this on YouTube and, you know, who knows? And then God just blesses the fruit of that labor. Um, and so just, again, trying to do something that you don't love, that you're not that good at, I don't think is sustainable at all. Just spend time understanding who God created you to be, what you're passionate about, and then ask him if there is a way to just add value to other people's lives through that. And then it never is work. It's always just fun. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. So like in, in that, like let's say the macrame thing, it's like, okay, you have a macrame ebook. I don't even know what macrame is. Um, the ebook. <laughs> I don't <you> know. <laughs> um, yeah, but just like videos, of course, like there's all of these different streams that you could learn how to monetize your expertise in that. And in that, you have to just like trust that people are going to want to purchase it. They're going to want to invest in it. And I mean, it's just, it's so crazy how we do, we overthink things and we think it has to be, we think it has to be, you know, we have to be a marketing genius or else we're not going to be able to sell anything. But it's like, well, no, God gave you your zone of genius. So what is that? And start putting it out there to the world. And if you live life out loud, like Kim says, you know, and just take the next step of in faith, take the next step in faith and just keep, keep pursuing what God has for you. Oh my gosh. So good. I love it. Now I got to go Google what macrame is, Kim. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what do you hope to leave behind? This is the last question I have. What do you hope to leave behind for everybody through your entrepreneur journey? I was thinking about the other day how, you know, when you go to the beach and you build a sandcastle with your kiddos and you, you spend two or three hours and it's all fancy and it's got the little, you know, roof, fancy roof line and all the, all the things, you know. And at the end of the day, you know that the sea is going to come wash over it. And it's going to disappear. But you do it anyway. Because it's community, it's love, it's relationship. And I really think that's what God says last, right? Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And so really, if nothing I've, and I put this in air quote, built or written or prepared outlives me, that is fine. Because love is a deposit in people that will grow into something beautiful, whether it has my name or my memory on it or not. And so my goal is just to do everything with great love. Every small thing, if I do it with great love, it will actually last forever. Oh my goodness. I love that. Okay, I'm going to go build a sandcastle today with my kids. No, maybe tomorrow. But I, oh my gosh, that is so good, the love piece, because we have to slow down. And, and be intentional because every time we have an interaction with somebody, that is an opportunity to deposit love into, into that person. And that's really, you're right. That's what God has called us to do, you know, in every moment. It's not because we're running from here to there. It's like we got to slow down and start to be intentional with those, those love deposits. Yeah, because the sand castles are not going to last. It doesn't matter how big and important it is. Look at Babylon. I mean, things that, you know, they thought they'd be a world power for forever in the sixth century. You know, nobody goes to Babylon, right? It's just like nothing lasts, but love lasts. Mm, So good. Well, Kim, thank you so much for being on the show again. And I hope everybody goes and picks up several copies again, member of the Prayer Powered Entrepreneur checks out your flourishing retreats. I think I need to go and do that, but I need to start um, being okay with meeting new people. So, and uh, being in a home with people I don't know too. So um, okay, I'll be praying for that. Understood. <laughs> Anyways, but I'm just so proud of you and just like all of the people that you've helped along the way. I mean, you were one of my first life coaches and I was probably the worst client, but um, you loved me anyway. So thank you. I do. And uh, I just am so grateful that people listened all the way through and that you took the time to be here today. So thank you. Thank you. It's been a privilege.